This is The Process Shot. I'm Michael. I'm stuck in a haunted movie theater, and I remembered to check the computer calendar for once. Turns out it's almost the end of the year, which is weird because I didn't get any Christmas movies. Anyways, I figured I'd shake things up a bit around here and make some lists to close out the year. To kick this off, I'm going to take it easy and sort out the best and worst short films of 2021. Full disclaimer, this will be based on whatever shorts I've seen and reviewed for this channel. I'm sure that other shorts have come out, but due to, well, limitations, I suppose, I can't see everything. And for that, I say, whoops. Anyways, let's get rolling. Starting from the bottom, the worst short I saw this year was A Little Death from Jer Jackson, which tries to be a sexy, dark comedy, but fails at three of those things. After that is Cats and Dogs by Juiced B. Chevelle, a short that tries and fails at being one thing, which in this case is Wes Anderson. From Delena Tran came Incomplete, which works as a music video and an experimental showcase but not quite as anything else. Calabasas 12620 from Xavier Rotnowski is interesting to an extent, but unfortunately wasted its potential by wasting its opportunities, focusing on a greater idea instead of something more immediate. Zane Rubin gave us Inland Empire, a short that tries to live up to its namesake, but ends up being more focused on weird images and ideas than anything more introspective or even homage-ish. In Place of Monuments from Naima Ramos Chapman is both a harrowing account of police brutality and an interesting work of interpretive dance, but the two separate elements just don't work together as a single film. Golden Age Karate by Sinda Aga is an entertaining portrait of a teenager teaching seniors karate skills, though its flashier presentation and editing tends to carry the load more than is really necessary. Calling from the Coral, directed by Jensen Powers, also feels a bit carried by its stylistic choices, despite the access of its filmmakers into an environment arguably more interesting than the movie's actual looks. No One Knows Me Like the Ocean, from Kai Neville, is rather directionless, but still offers some comfy cinematography and a dreamlike sense of movement, as if living in the moment of the film shoot, rather than capturing a greater theme or event. Siren, by Jess Cole, is also more focused on a dreamlike presentation than a direct story or other narrative, and while its ideas may need some outside context, it's enough of a visual trip and an experimental showcase of ballet to keep viewers interested. The Desert, directed by Michael Dockery, is yet another story without a strong narrative, but still offers enough imagination in its setting and enough potential in its world building that you do come out of it hoping to see more in the future. Irradiation from Zava Zivkovic does have a short narrative that doesn't really ask for much from the audience, working more as a technical showcase for the animation engine, but thankfully the two ideas work well enough together to keep the whole thing interesting. The Field Trip, directed by Megan O'Hara, Mike Addy, and Rodrigo Ojeda Beck, is a farcical, if not satirical, look at children in a business environment experiencing the trials of the workplace firsthand, staying funny enough, but meandering a bit by the end. Round and Round, from Talia Pasqua and Simeon Pratt, is another documentary that has a good sense of focus on its group of roller derby players, but it trades a strong narrative and storyline for pure style though this doesn't necessarily ruin anything overall. We Were There to Be There by Mike Plant and Jason Willis makes for a great use of archival material and recontextualization to illustrate an event and its surrounding environment, 
but doesn't quite hit the connections necessary to truly tie the two together. Order and Chaos by Thomas Vans is a technical showcase that mixes real-world footage and computer graphics to a great effect, with the final result working out more for a cinematography or effects reel, but still remaining compelling. Jeremy McNamara gives us The Skate Park on Treasure Island, a documentary that keeps as grounded as its subjects, with a story of bureaucratic triumph ironically mismatched with local do-it-yourself architects, and an ultimate story of perseverance and community. Leftovers comes from La Chen, giving us a story that presents the reality facing restaurant owners at the height of the pandemic, which may come from a place of truth and actual experiences, but still has a hurting effect on the viewer, especially for short marketed as a dark comedy. Thrown to the Wolves from Michael Kahn and Niles Roth is a very harrowing look at workers on the front lines of that pandemic and their experiences. And while it trades a natural or realistic presentation for a flashier style, that's what is kind of necessary to pull you directly into this world. The Beauty President comes from Whitney Skog, crossing between archival material and new interviews to showcase a long-forgotten person who could easily be seen as a trailblazer now, though the short's production itself could have probably used a bit more imagination. Maneuvers from Sammy Ortslieb is another short that's more experimental than narrative, though in this case its use of stop motion to alter the real-world environment of snowboarders makes for an entertaining fight between man and nature. While You Were Sleeping from Anderson Wright looks at the quieter side of American nightlife in a warm and comforting manner, with a nice and heavy use of shadows to fully immerse the viewer in the environments, though it does tend to repeat itself more often than not. Trade Center, a documentary short from Adam Barron, looks at a niche element of New York history in retrospect and hindsight, with a bit of nostalgia for a time long since past and a whole lot of discomfort if you don't know what you're in for. Every Sport a Bowling Ball by Sam H. Buchanan is a very short comedy film that showcases a great use of imagination with a very simple concept, getting in and out with its content and knowing what works and what doesn't, though I do feel like it could have gone on a bit longer. Fire Season from Quinn Else is an excellent look at modern-day issues in climate change and the ongoing ignorance of people and how they might see forest fires as more of a tourist stop than a sign of greater issues. And while it may feel a bit pushy with this messaging, in another sense it makes it clear why exactly it has to be that way. Believe in Ghosts by Courtney Dixon gives us an interesting look at a niche, though dying, element of Black America, but one that is very much rooted in the lessons and leaders of the past, guiding others into an uncertain future, though it does tend to harp upon the thematic point more than is necessary at the cost of any further exploration of the subject's work. Stuffed, directed by Theo Rees, makes for an entertaining cross between dark comedy and musical, with a rather shocking premise being treated as something entirely normal, and while it does rely more on its irony to carry the story, foregoing any deeper character development as well, it's still fun enough to keep you attentive throughout. Moving on to the top 10 shorts of 2021 that I've seen, at number 10 is Voice Note. A very short PSA kind of deal from Talia Galasco. Admittedly, this is more of a call for mental health awareness and anxiety help than something more narrative, but as a work of filmmaking, it's still rather impressive how much it gets done in a small time frame. Its use of editing and shifting aspect ratios help to immerse the viewer into this feeling of claustrophobia, and it further puts them in the state of mind of the main character 
and really any person who has such issues. Number nine is The Great Fair by Andrew Wonder, which gives us a dreamlike sort of walk through various state fairs, as if we were children experiencing them for the first time and unsure exactly what was going on, sort of. It makes for a very fun look at a now obscure element of Americana with a naturalistic soundtrack that further blends everything together into a stream of sound and vision. Eighth on my list is Saint Making by Marco Alessi, a short documentary of the gay British scene and its protests against their powerlessness, showcasing both a significant event for members of its scene, as well as a modern catch-up with participants. The combination of archival material and modern footage works well, and it's rounded out by the brief commentary on how the scene has changed after all these years. The seventh film in my top ten is The Diamond, directed by Caitlin Green. More of a series of profiles than anything, the film gives us a great amount of insight into its subjects, even in such a short amount of time, and with its rather slow pacing. With its still framing and long takes, it presents a few visual metaphors and comes together as a solid statement on human worth. The Chrysalis, from Yago Hunt Laudi, comes in at number six, giving us a profile of a single person affected by the pandemic, presented in a dynamic style that displays both the chaos and calmness of the subject's life before, during, and after the pandemic first hit. It's an interesting look into how they managed to continue their work, despite the loss of local opportunities. And while it may be niche, its ideas are still universal enough to be worth sharing. Number five is H.A.G.S. Have a Good Summer, from Sean Wang. With its creative use of animation and photography, the short is a nice walk through nostalgia for the past, the changes a person makes over the course of years, and how the experiences have changed over generations, especially for those with parents who would have faced hardships outside of education. The visual presentation makes these complicated ideas easy to follow, further making the final film easy to connect with as well. In fourth is A Broken House, directed by Jimmy Goldblum. This documentary has good visual flair and an excellent narrative in its profile of a man essentially trapped between two worlds. While it doesn't quite make the most of the ideas it sets up, it's still compelling in its look at how world events can compound upon a single person, as well as how that person copes with the pressure both privately and later through outward activism. The third best short that I've seen this year is All Too Well, the short film, directed by Taylor Swift. It may be a long-form music video, but it still shows a great potential for the director as, well, a film director, with an ability to craft a rather complex narrative from her lyrics. While the visuals do rely almost too much on what is being sung, there's still enough of a sense of imagination and personal vision that makes the final result feel wholly new, as though the song were written around the film instead. Coming in as the second best short of the year is Another Hayride by Matt Wolf. This documentary makes great use of its archival material, with some interview audio intercut to add further context. You're effectively immersed into this setting as a result, and you come to understand what compels people to attend the therapeutic sessions featured within the film, as well as what makes their organizer such a compelling and charismatic figure. Finally, the best short film I've seen this year is The Rifleman, directed by Sierra Pettengill. Like Another Hayride, this film is also purely archival, though it looks entirely to older material and asks you to draw your own conclusions based on what is recorded as having happened. Its greater subject matter is enough to justify this deep dive into history, and the material is all presented in a way which makes it easy enough to follow along as new information is shared. It sheds light on something that otherwise goes ignored or maybe oversimplified, and in the end, while there's still a lot to take in, it's what you get out of it that matters.
<sighs> well then, I guess that's it for my list. I don't know how to close this out, so I guess I'll just go with my normal script. If you like this list, leave a like. If you disagree with any part of this list, or you want to suggest a short that I should have seen, leave a comment. As always, subscribe to the channel for more reviews in the future. I mean, subscribe for more lists in the future. Maybe. Hopefully this gets received well. <laughs>